بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله I begin with the name of Allah. All praise belongs to Allah. And may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad for he is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rajul Tawil. Rajul Tawil. A tall man. Rajulani Tawilani. Two tall men. Rijal Tawil. Tall men. Imra'a Tawila. A tall woman. And Nisa Tawilat, tall women. This na'at, this adjective, it matches the noun that is describing in terms of masculine or feminine, singular, dual, or plural. Tawil for singular masculine. Tawilan for dual masculine. Here, feminine singular, just add a tamarputa. Here for feminine plural, alif and ate. This is the only one here for masculine uh, plural nouns that is a little bit tricky because every single adjective has its own pattern of uh, plurality, its own plural form. And you just have to memorize the adjective and the plural form of that adjective. We talked about this in the previous lessons, alhamdulillah. But there's a pattern here overall. There is a pattern. Now, with this pattern, this framework in mind, here is a curveball. The Arabic language is very mathematical, very formulaic. There's 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 2 equals 4. It's all nice and easy to understand until it's not, until it's not. And this lesson is one of those examples when it is not formulaic. What am I talking about? In the Arabic language, when you deal with nouns, that are plural objects, plural objects, meaning not people, we're talking about things. When it's made plural, it's treated as if it's feminine singular, a very strange rule in the Arabic language. When these objects, these things that we see in the world around us, when they're spoken of in the plural form, the adjectives that come after them are feminine singular, or you can say Female singular. What am I talking about? Buyut. Buyut. This is a plural noun. The singular of this is bait. Bait means a house, although in classical Arabic it meant a tent, but similar idea. A house, a tent, a place that you live in, a domicile, you can say. A house. Plural of bait is buyut. Houses. Houses. Now, if you want to add an adjective to this word houses, you have to use a feminine singular adjective. Like, kabira. Kabira is from kabir. A very well-known word in the Arabic language. Kaf, ba, ya, ra. Kabir means big. If you're referring to big houses, you have to say kabira. Arat zaman buta. It's as if this word is a feminine singular person. Very strange. If we go back one step, that falls into this camp right here. Imra'a. How imra'a tawila, a tall woman. This makes sense. Tawil, you're buta. You're talking about a feminine thing. Okay. Tawila, tamal buta. When you're talking about plural objects in the Arabic language, not people, objects, things, they're treated as if you're talking about imra'a, a woman. Why? It just is. Every single language has its own peculiar rules. And this is the peculiar rules of the Arabic language, alhamdulillah. Kabir turns into kabira when you're talking about buyut. Buyut kabira, big houses. Kutub. What does kutub mean? This is the plural of kitab. Book. Something that is written down. A book. Kutub. Books. Thaqila. What does thaqila mean? This is from thaqil. When you see it, it looks like an adjective. It's on the fa'il pattern, isn't it? Just like kabir, thaqil, fa'il. They're all on the fa'il pattern. Good sign of an adjective. Not always, but 
most of the time. Thaqil means heavy. So if you want to say heavy books, we say thaqila. Zamarbuta. We're talking about books as if it's a female singular person. Why? Because that's what the Arabs did. How did the Arabs speak back in the old days? This is how they spoke, then it's a rule. No one sat down and made this rule up. This is just how the Arabs spoke. This is the rule. This is how they speak. Kutub thaqila, heavy books. Abweb. Abweb is the plural of bab, which means a door or a gate, depending on the context. Something that you open up in order to enter a building or something of, of shelter. Bab, plural of that, abweb. Abweb, doors. Maftuha, what does this mean? This is from maftuh. Maftuh is like maf'ul, another common pattern for adjectives in the Arabic language. Maftuh means open. So if you want to say open doors, we have to add a tam al Abweb maftuha, open doors. Again, abweb, this refers to plural objects. This is not a human being, but the Arabs refer to plural objects as if it's feminine singular. You take an adjective, just add a tamanaputa at the end of it. Abweb maftuha, open doors. Juyush. Juyush is the plural of jaysh. Jaysh is an object. What is jaysh? An army. Juyush armies. Plural. Mahzume. Mahzume, just like maftuha on the maf'ul pattern, very common adjective pattern, is from mahzum. Mahzum means vanquished, defeated, beaten in battle. If you want to say vanquished armies, you would say juyush mahzume. Juyush mahzume. Demelbuta, as if we're referring to a female singular person, but we're referring to plural objects, juyush, armies. Anjum. Anjum is the plural of najem. Najem means a star, a star in the sky. Anjum, stars. These are plural objects. Lami'a. This is from Lam, 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 alif, mim, ayn, which is on the fa'il pattern, another common pattern for adjectives in the Arabic language. What does lam mean? It means shining, twinkling, flashing. Lam means shining, referring to a female singular person. But here we're talking about Shining stars. Anjum lamia. Shining stars. Ayam. Ayam is the plural of yaum, which means day, as in 24 hours in a day. Plural, ayam, days. Asifa. Asifa. Again, this is asif. Which is like fa'il, a common pattern for adjectives. Asif means windy, a lot of wind. You can even say stormy in a way, having a storm going on. Asif, windy. Asifa, windy. Windy days. Ayam asifa, windy days. Wuju, wuju is the plural of. Waja, which means face, someone's face. Uju, faces. Nadira, nadira again. Nadir, which means you can say fresh. You can even say uh, radiant, uh, glowing, but fresh, uh, beautiful. All those connotations. 
In fact, nadir is used for fruit. When fruit is just ripening and it's very, uh, it's very good to eat, you would say that fruit is nadir. Nadira would be fresh, radiant faces. This is actually mentioned in the Quran. People on the Day of Judgment, when they get their reward, will have fresh faces, radiant faces. An ahlam sa'ida from hulm, which means a dream. Ahlam, dreams. Sa'ida means pleasant, happy. Pleasant dreams. This is what you say to your children when you tuck them in. Ahlam sa'ida. Pleasant dreams. So what we're seeing here is that all of these plural objects, they're described as if they're feminine singular people. Or feminine singular person, you can say. And so, here is that graph. Tawil, tawilan, tawil, tawila, tawilat. And here at the end, we have a plural object. Suyuf. What are suyuf? Swords. So here, if we want to say long swords, what do we do? Tawila. Just like Tawila for Imra'a. A tall woman, tall or long swords. Suyuf Tawila. A very peculiar rule in the Arabic language that we just have to get used to. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yam al-qiyamati wa salam tasliman kathira.